Hello everyone, I'm Chris Thomas. You're watching ABC 10 Tonight. Dozens of workers were told they'd get paid after a Sacramento restaurant abruptly closed. But months later, they say they haven't gotten any money. Plus, pedestrian safety council members expected to propose a state of emergency after several people have been killed in the last few months. Then, cool temperatures are expected for the next few days. What to expect for the week in weather? ABC 10 Tonight starts now. Dozens of employees who were let go after a Buca de Beppo Italian restaurant shut down about two months ago say they have not been paid promised wages. Yeah, the restaurant closed after 25 years in late July, and employees say they just have nowhere else to turn for answers. ABC 10's Roxanne Elias has the story. Basically 12 hours to 14 hours notice, they let us know, and they shut down the store completely. On the night of July 28th, about 50 employees who worked at Buca de Beppo Italian restaurant in Sacramento were told it would be shutting down for good. We were there the following day as several pieces of furniture and equipment were placed outside. Aaron Torrance, the former executive chef, says employees were given this letter. They were making the decision to close the Sacramento location that they would continue to pay employees for the next 60 days based on a uh, median set of hours from the last 90 days they worked. They were told that they would receive it on their normal paydays every two weeks. Um, and that process never happened. That promise is highlighted here in the letter. It's part of the WARN Act, which protects employees, their families, and communities by requiring employers to give a 60-day notice before a plant closing or mass layoff. But Torrance says it's been almost two months since the closure and his employees have yet to see a dime. We have been trying to find out as much information as we can. In the letters that we received, it told us to contact HR if there was any issue. Not one of the individuals received a call back from HR. Uh, we've been reaching out to our divisional vice president, Jennifer Estep. Didn't get any information from her either concerning this. Torrin says he is one of the lucky ones who has been able to find employment, but he says others are waiting in limbo as they try to find another job. It's just a mixture of confusion and sadness. It's just uh, uh, they don't know what to do next or how to approach the situation. They're lost. These are hourly employees working within a restaurant who worked very hard every day to make something happen. In Sacramento, Roxana Elias, ABC 10. Now, we did reach out for comment, but we have not heard back. Meanwhile, employees are encouraged to file a claim with the California Department of Industrial Relations for the wages they're still owed. A woman is now dead after a car hit her last week in Sacramento. She is one of more than 260 pedestrians and cyclists who have been hit and killed by a vehicle in Sacramento city limits since 2012. And now city leaders want to declare a state of emergency. ABC 10's Becca Hobbegger shows us what this involves. This was the scene Thursday night on Sutterville Road near Sacramento City College. A car hit a woman who died from her injuries on Sunday. I'm devastated hearing about another loss and I would say that this is a public health uh, issue, um, an emergency. On Monday, Sacramento Vice Mayor Katie Maple and Mayor Daryl Steinberg held a news conference announcing their proposal to declare a state of emergency to address pedestrian injuries and fatalities in traffic crashes. There's a disproportionate impact on our lower income communities of Sacramento. Since 2012, they say more than 260 people either walking or riding a bike have been killed. This heat map from UC Berkeley's Transportation Injury Mapping System shows the areas with more frequent fatal crashes over the past dozen years. They include Stockton Boulevard, Rio Linda Boulevard, Mack Road, and Del Paso Boulevard. How do we get the resources to be able to invest more in safe streets? The city's Vision Zero Action Plan, adopted in 2018, aims to get to zero deadly crashes and serious traffic-related injuries on Sacramento city streets by 2027. It involves safety projects, including crosswalk improvements, reducing school speed zones to 15 miles per hour, and more. Many projects have been done, according to the city's most recent Vision Zero update last summer, but there's more work left, made more difficult with budget constraints and rising costs. Vision Zero is almost entirely funded by grant funding. The cost of these projects has gone up astronomically since COVID. That's not just in Sacramento, that's all over the state, that's all over the US. 
Um, we're seeing these increases, so we're trying to respond as government. They hope to see a county ballot measure in a future election to increase sales tax to pay for traffic safety improvements. For now, they're looking for affordable ways to improve traffic safety and say declaring a state of emergency could potentially mobilize state funds, launch a public education campaign, and direct the city manager to work with police to increase traffic enforcement. I think right now there is very much a feeling in some places in the city that that maybe you can get away with it and you do see people speeding down the streets. They say traffic safety improves with awareness and accountability. And Becca Hoffbecker joining us right now in this emergency declaration. It still needs some work, still some channels to go through, right? Yeah, that's right. City leaders submitted the proposal just today, but they say it has to go before a committee and get reviewed by the city attorney and the city manager, among other leaders, before it even comes to the council for a vote. And hey, they also want to hear from the public on this, particularly when the proposal goes before the committee. They want ideas on how the city can improve pedestrian safety and where people think it is needed the most. All right, Becca, thank you so much. Yeah, really and I should mention, by the way, sorry, I no, forgot sorry. a point. Um, Steinberg and Maple do point out that uh, two other cities in California have declared similar states of emergency regarding traffic safety. Uh, city of San Francisco and Carlsbad, that's been in recent years, and uh, Carlsbad reports uh, some fairly optimistic statistics, so they're hoping that Sacramento can follow suit. Yep, and we will continue to follow this. Becca, thank you so much. We are learning new details tonight about a triple homicide in Lodi. San Joaquin County deputies just alerted the public about the murders that date back to June. It all comes after an arrest was made in the case this weekend. ABC 10's Alicia Machado is live in Lodi with more. And Alicia, I know you had a chance to speak to neighbors, right? That's right, Chris. Many of them not wanting to go on camera for their safety, but they tell me they had a feeling that something bad had happened in their neighborhood back in June when they saw that heavy police presence flooding into the area. Their hunch was confirmed today when the sheriff's office went public with that announcement of the arrest of a 25 year old suspect who they say knew the family who was killed. 25 year old Stephen Guerrero Jr. from Stockton faces three counts of murder, accused of killing a mother, father, and son on East Metler Road in Lodi back in June. We found a horrific scene where uh, three subjects of this family had been shot to death. The San Joaquin County Sheriff identified the victims as 60 year old Joe Penna, 69 year old Kim Wee, and their son, 45 year old Alfred Wynn. Deputies discovered them after a welfare check requested by family members who hadn't heard from them in several days. The sheriff's office says investigators believe this was not a random act. As they say, Guerrero knew the family. Uh, it appeared to us to be a, a targeted um, act of violence. And, and it was by somebody that knew the family. But the sheriff's office would not elaborate on why they believe it was targeted or how they might have known each other. Guerrero was arrested on townhome drive in Stockton Saturday, three months after the murder. You know, some members of the public might think, hey, three months is a long time. Can you explain that? Uh, three months is, may seem a long time for the public. However, in an investigation, it is not a whole lot of time. Um, during that time, we are collecting lots of information and documents and things like that that are from other companies. And so that takes time. So we're just trying to collect as much evidence and evidence as possible to convict him. A neighbor we spoke with who did not want to go on camera for their safety said they received few details about what happened back in June and wish they were told more by law enforcement. Well, why wait this long to release the details? Yeah, absolutely. That, that, you know, since there was no threat to ongoing threat to the public, um, it was all about uh, making sure that this person paid for what he did to this family. And so uh, the integrity of the investigation became the utmost uh, importance. Guerrero is set to appear in court for arraignment tomorrow. Live in Lodi, Alicia Machado, ABC 10. And of course, stay with us for updates on air and online at abc10.com. Alicia, thank you. Let's turn to your weather now by bringing in meteorologist Brendan Minchef. We're getting a much welcomed taste of autumn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say, but it's not going to last, it doesn't seem, right? Uh, I mean, we've got a couple more days, uh -huh. right? It'll last really through Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, but yeah, that pumpkin spice smell in the air is not going to stick around until the autumnal equinox on Sunday. 
We'll get to that in just a second. But right now we are going to take a look at radar and satellite over the last couple of hours. We've been dry in the valley, really outside of a few sprinkles across parts of the valley this morning. That's about all we've seen. And really, that was expected. Most of the activity with the storm was going to be up in the high country. That's what we've seen, and that's what we continue to see. Some showers mainly north of Interstate 80, still seeing some snow showers uh, in the high country of the Southern Sierra and Yosemite, mainly above 8,000 feet. Now, could we see another shower later on tonight in the Northern Valley? Sure, we could, but anything, again, is still going to be pretty light. A look around uh, the high country from the Alert California Wildfire cameras and the Sierra Buttes are in the clouds, not necessarily rain or snow there, but they're actually literally in the clouds. Uh, dusting of snow, though, in Inyo County, that's on Silver Peak there. Again, the highest elevations, the highest peaks are seeing uh, dusting of snow out of this storm, but we're not going to see anything uh, at the passes uh, of 80 or 50 with this storm or with the one coming up on Wednesday. Temperatures right now, 71 Sacramento, 72 in Elk Grove, 73 Stockton, 74 Modesto, 63 Placerville, 66 in Auburn. A lot more cloud cover and showery, so it's much cooler in the high country. 46 in South Lake Tahoe right now, 52 in Truckee. Temperatures, I think it goes without saying, across much of the region are cooler, uh, much cooler than this time yesterday, especially in the high Sierra. So through the rest of this evening, we'll be still in those low 70s, upper 60s by the time we get to the top of the hour. It'll be a slower cool down through the evening and overnight because we are going to have some clouds building in even across the valley. Clouds like to hold some of that daytime heat in. So we are going to be in those 50s to start tomorrow, but uh, that's a little warmer than where we'd be if we had clear skies overnight. We could see some low 50s, but I expect because of those clouds, even across the valley, starting off near 55 tomorrow morning in the big mountain backyard. As we take a look at the forecast for tomorrow, we're going to start mostly sunny. Then we're going to have some clouds coming in as the day goes on for Tuesday. We're going to be warmer tomorrow, but still well below average 77. My high tomorrow in Sacramento, 78 Elk Grove, 80 Stockton, 80 Modesto. The average high for this time of year is 89. So we are going to be close to 10 degrees below average for the time of year. Taking a look at future cast again. Could we see some showers trying to work their way into the Northern Valley tonight? Sure, we could. They're going to be pretty light, though. Most of us dry out really for most of the day tomorrow. It's kind of that break between systems. We'll have some sun and clouds in the valley tomorrow. More clouds build in Tuesday night and then Wednesday system number two arrives. We're going to see more rain in the high country, but snow level is going to be probably of 8,500 to 9,000 feet. So even above most of the highest peaks of the Sierra. Not a whole lot of activity in the valley, kind of like what we saw with this storm, but there's a little more moisture, so we're going to have another shot of seeing some rain. It is a weather impact alert day. Just plan on there being some showers, especially in the latter half of the day on Wednesday. Taking a look at the forecast here, the extended forecast, we do warm up. We stay in those low 80s through Thursday, but then you see the first day of fall there, Sunday. We're back in those middle 90s. What the heck? Oh, First day of fall and wow. it's feeling like summer again. Bust out the flannel, but keep the shorts and sandals nearby. <laughs> that, that's right. Yes. Marching toward 100 again. Unbelievable. Yeah, huh? unfortunately, huh? Okay. Yeah. Brendan, thank you. Well, if you are walking along the American River Parkway today, you may run into a man on a unicycle. Hopefully, you don't run into him, though. Yeah, his name is Doug Lee. He'll take the 60-mile ride all on one wheel today. He's doing it for a good cause. ABC 10's Mark S. Allen got the chance to meet with him this morning. Take a look. Yeah, good Monday morning, you guys. This is the man, the myth, the legend, Doug Lee of Folsom. How are you? Very good. Good morning. It's kind of awesome. And uh, I've been dared by him to ride my unicycle badly, so I'll try. Uh, I don't want to mess things up because in less than one hour, you're riding 60 miles because he's 60 years old, a grandfather, and I guess the reason you're doing it. Why? Uh, so initially, I just wanted to ride my age as kind of a challenge, um, but then I decided to make a fundraiser out of it. So my grandson, who's four years old, mm -hmm. uh, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when he was 16 months old. And uh, so I decided to do a fundraiser for Breakthrough T1D, which is a nonprofit organization that uh, spends their efforts on finding a cure, better treatment options, and so forth for those with type 1 diabetes. You are awesome. And you've tried this? How far have you ridden so far? Longest ride? 45 is my longest. Oh, come on. You've got this. You're I, almost I, there. I hope that did it. Hey, I, hope that I, I buried the lead. I know him from a previous life, former chief of police for Lincoln. Yes. What years? Uh, 2017 through 21. Very awesome. Retired now, except for all this professional unicycle yes, riding. You yes. know, the circus was in town this yeah, weekend. I know. We I, could I go. stayed away, so I didn't get recruited. Okay, here we go. Any tips? Uh, stay on. Stay on. Rubber side down. <laughs> Rubber side down. Hold on, we're almost there. Almost. We're almost there. Stop mocking me. Maybe a drum roll would help. Oh, very nice. Thank you. All right, come on, Doug. Don't me, leave me out here by myself. By the way, if you want to help him and help the cause, type 1 diabetes needs you. Doug, how do they help you? 
Um, I'll share the link with you. Hopefully, you can share that on the on your. Uh, the, yeah, your we'll share the link. Uh, also, my Facebook page. It's Mark S. Allen Show. Look, we got a ride to the starting point. Less than one hour. Where can they find you and help you kick this off? I will be at the Nimbus Flat Recreation Area, which is down by near the Sac State Aquatic Center, Hazel on Fifty. Okay. You're doing we, great. You're doing great. We got to get over there. We got to get there in time for this ride. Back to you in the studio. Help. Hey. Yeah. Well, one guy. <laughs> One guy's got a helmet on, which is a I good thing. I was thinking thing. the same thing. Yeah, one I would guy's love got, to the see other Marcus guy with a helmet on. Other guy needs a, a helmet because he's a little wobbly. He was kind of swimming through. Marcus Allen was swimming. Swimming through. through the event. Good luck, boys, and what a great cause, Doug Lee, uh, a life of service, and we appreciate him for that. Hi, my name is Mirta Villarreal Younger. I am the CEO and president of Agile Construction. I am a proud combat veteran, American of Mexican descent. As a first generation American, I came from a family of five siblings and I was very aware that my family did not have the means to provide for me to go to college. So I saw the military as my avenue or my vehicle to gaining that education. Latinos have a very proud history of military service in the United States. We have served in every conflict in history and we are currently the fastest growing demographic within the military representing 17% of the overall forces. I have served in a non-traditional role my whole adult life. So going into construction, it became very evident that this once again was a very male dominated area. One of our tenants in this, in our firm, is that we will contract with, subcontract with, extend that opportunity to a fellow veteran or a fellow woman or a person of color. Take that leap, bet on yourself, and recognize all of the strength that comes with being a woman, being a woman of color, being a Latina. Thanks so much for watching ABC 10 tonight. Keep in mind, we're here 24 seven on the free ABC 10 plus app, where you can always get your news and weather anytime, anywhere. I'm Chris Thomas. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Alex Bell. Join me weeknights at 630 on To The Point. Instead of just reporting on the problems, we cut through the noise and look for solutions. We're not afraid to investigate local stories. We're not afraid to include different perspectives. We're not afraid to hold those in power accountable. This is your community and it's my community too. And we're here to make it better for everyone. Join me, Alex Bell, on To The Point, weeknights at 6.30, only on ABC 10.